Thank you. Hello, my name is Craig Bennett, and I'm the founder and owner of TechView Snoop. And today we're doing another Android tutorial, and this is Android tutorial number 18. If you haven't seen the previous ones, I highly recommend it. The card will be showing towards the top about now. And for this one, we're going to get into how layouts work in a general aspect, how to best set up things, and some cheap tricks that I came up with and that I found that might help you out. And um, if you know about some of this stuff or don't care about it, then feel free to skip. The card will be up there somewhere. But if you don't see the card, that means that video, the next video, is not out yet. And please feel free to keep in mind that this will come out, the tutorial will come out once or twice a week. <clears throat> now, as far as this goes, I um, made a total layout for one of the tests in the demonstrations. And we're going to be looking at relative layout first. So this is probably what you're going to come across when you're coming to Android. So one of the things to keep in mind with relative layout is what does it mean? What's the difference between relative and linear layout? Relative layout, so we have a relative layout, which is it places in a rough manner. I'll get a little bit more into this in a second. Linear layout means I place, if it's a vertical, I place an item here, then below it, then below it, so on. Horizontal, obviously, left to right. So, with that, with the relative layout, you can have a very cut size application. Now, when we drag a object on the relative layout, you'll see arrows come out of it, the highlights of it, some numbers toward the top, and possibly if you put it in the middle, then you'll see some some other stuff. Basically, it's showing you the anchor points. Based on these anchor points is based on what it will look like depending on how big or small the screen gets. Now with this, and, and keep in mind, I'm not going to get into how to make your application in the portrait or landscape mode only. So keep that one in mind. And the reason why I'm doing that as a totally separate video is a lot of people probably will be searching for that one thing when uh, it, it comes time to set, seeing a whole entire video on layouts. But with this, we can tell the application to only show in portrait or landscape, or it doesn't matter. So let's throw that down, and we can see that we can flip the app application to portrait or landscape. We can even change the size of the display that we're viewing it on, on here, through here so if we wanted to we can actually do preview all screens and it will show us a generalized look of all the screens and it may take a second or two for the stuff to load but we can get a good idea and you can just throw things on there if you want and you can see it adding on there as you come across so with this, let's uh, let's go ahead and jump out of that and go to the actual application again to delete the layouts themselves. One of the best methods is just hitting the delete button on the keyboard when you highlight what you want to delete. So let's move that back to I think it was this and tell it to remove the preview. And with this, what we have is a um, the application we were working on. Now, with this, I'm assuming that you watched the previous video where I really got into you need to take a look at the properties. The properties on many of the objects that you throw on the design, it will change how things look and feel. For example, if I go to the spatial bar, which I'll tell you, about in a second, I can say either wrap content or I can tell a particular size. The reason why you don't want to say a particular size for most things, like a 
lettering and some other things is what would end up happening is that will potentially negatively affect your application when the size gets much much bigger or much much smaller in screen size for whatever device that the app's on so with that um, other things to keep in mind is the gravity so if we take a look at this what i have here is a submit button and a help button the submit button i want to have on one side of the screen and the help button on the other side of the screen what i can have is a linear layout a horizontal layer layout so i can have uh, the buttons left and right but because i don't want them stacked on top of each other what i want happen is a two linear layout specifically horizontal linear layouts and that way i can tell the application to put one button on one side and one on the other to do this after putting the first button up there it will naturally go to the left side i would tell the linear layout the first one to go to match parent or fill parent and then the second one same thing match parent as far as the width uh, the height on both of them um, the the first one should be wrap concept the second one doesn't matter but um, with the second linear layout the horizontal linear layout inside of the other we have a gravity which here we can tell it to put the thing towards the right Sorry about that the gravity right here which tells it to go towards the right the center or any other part depending on how you have things set up so with this I also have a scroll view and earlier I was messing around with this for practicing purposes for this video and I have a small screen which shows you an example of a scroll view so with this the scroll view is is basically anything inside the scroll view you can scroll or have a scroll effect you can have multiple scroll views inside a given design and then on top of that you can have scroll views inside of other scroll views it's it's not commonly seen but theoretically is it's possible and android might change the rules but at this time i've i've used it once um i never really got too much of a use out of it now you will need to have a layout inside of the scroll view so you can put things and as we see here let's go back into this we have a linear layout going from top to bottom a separator bar which i'll show you how to make in a second a scroll view in the middle and then another linear layout on the bottom so what happens is is the separator bars says hey pay attention to this area or it separates things as the name a stitch and then on here you can actually have a scroll effect in case the screen is not big enough for all the content in there you can tell it here scroll this if the screen's not big enough however if the screen is big enough then there's no purpose of a scroll effect so you won't even see it come up so it's a very basic thing where like for example with this if i hit menu you'll see the scroll bar on the right side for a few seconds and then it'll go away well a similar thing happens is um, if if it if it's not needed it won't show at all so with that that's a pretty good example of this and you might be wondering all right how did i get that gap without adding any um odd things on the linear layout what i did is margins to do margins let's go to the top and you need to think of the 
like this. Margins basically is a padding around a given object. To do a margin per item, what you do is go to the properties, or you can type it in code map for the easy way. And then you can go to say if I want a margin from the top portion. So if I want a gap between the your name and the separator bar, what I'll do is go to top. Oops, let's remember that. Go to margin. Go to top. And let's say 200 dp. So you can see right there. And you say, oh, I want a separation between the bottom. So I want to do, say, 10 dp. You can go from there. It's pretty simple stuff. And that way, you don't have to worry much about that. Now, what I would advise is, let's go to this, is have some type of margin. And what you'll find with this is I actually do have a margin for each one of these, which is 5 TP from each other. And it just makes it easier for the person to see so it's not all bunched up and the person is just basically blurred because it's all bunched up and the person can't get the information as quick as possible. So with that, that's a big thing to keep in mind is the margins. Let's go back to the input. And with this, what we have is, um, again, rewriting. We have a linear layout or a relative layout, depending on which one you want to go with. A scroll view and how that works. And then how to do tricks where you have a linear layout inside of another one to create an effect. What about the separator bar? This is another trick. It's there's there's other things you can actually use in this place, believe it or not. But it's just I don't know, it's just something that I like to use because I have more control over it. And what you need to do is you have a bar or you have a text. So it's just a plain text for you. So that's actually make a, another thing and let's just throw in here a button and then a plain text and then with here I want that to fill and I want to only have that as ADP. So it forces it to be that. I'm going to grab the hex code from that. Go down to background and let's go to tax. And there you go. That's as simple as this is, and you just copy and paste it's just this line of code. In fact, you don't even need the ID. So it's it's that simple because the background, basically what this says is make the background this color. We want to fill the width. And then we want to say the height. If we have a wrap height, then what would happen is it, it'll It'll fill the width, but it'll be literally not even a pixel across. So what you need to keep in mind with this is um, if you don't have text, you got to define the actual height. If for separated bars, I like to use eight. Use whatever's comfortable for you. Again, there's actual things out there, but I have more control over this. And um, and, and with this, you can pick the height you want. Again, to delete that. The best way to is just hit the delete key. But again, the best thing to do is take a look at your layout, see if you're happy with it. And you can go through here, do a preview to see all this. In another video, I'm going to get into how to prevent your application from going 
from a landscape to a portrait or stick it with one or the other and that way say for example with something like the um, horizontal like let's take a look at this if we tell it to go to landscape then we can see if it looks good or not in this case it's actually not that bad or we can go to portrait and see what that looks like and I personally like the landscape a little bit more but for something like this I'll give the user choice but anyways with that in mind this has been Craig Bennett, the founder and owner of Tech View Snelp. And if you found this video helpful, then leave a like, subscribe, share, check out our Patreon, and donate there to help these educational videos keep coming out. But also, if you have any questions or want to add anything into here, then please feel free to leave that in the comment section, and I'll take a look at that and try to get back to you as quickly as possible. Have a good day.